Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a haul for you all, but not your typical haul that you would see on this channel. I feel like most of the time I do like clothing hauls or thrift hauls and those things, but I really only have a small amount of clothes, which I guess I'll show you first. In this haul, I have like four things, I think, and then the rest of this is just souvenirs, gifts, decor, all of those good things, okay? But this is everything that I got when I was in India for the past three weeks. I got back late last night and I wanted to film this because I also had to take a week off of uploading, which was not my intention. I pre-filmed before the trip so I wouldn't have to take any time off. But then tragedy struck when my camera charger died when I was in India and nobody in my group that I was traveling with, literally like 14 plus people, did not have the same MacBook computer charger that I did. And so nobody could give me like a replacement and I didn't wanna go out and have to like buy a new one when I was traveling with a group of people and make them like all stop and do that for me. It just seemed like a sign, if you will, just to leave that shit alone and just worry about uploading when I get back. So that's what I'm doing now, baby, worrying about it once I'm back. And um, yeah, I also wanted to say that today is the last day of February, so I was planning on doing it. I love this stuff for today. And I'm uploading this instead for a few reasons. One, because most of this month I was in India, so I didn't really, I mean, all of the stuff that I'm going to be showing in this is kind of what I've been loving this month because I was just there and not in my normal space back home. And two, I I also just thought that this would be a nice come back to YouTube upload for this channel just to explain where the heck I've been. Okay, so all of that aside, let's freaking get into the haul. Okay, baby. Hello, folks. So I'm coming to you from my shitty MacBook quality right now. Just to relay a quick message um, before you watch this haul, I'm trying to avoid receiving the you're a dumb, white, ignorant girl comments. Um, so I've been having some conversations with some traditional Hindu viewers on Instagram right now, basically just about what I purchased, whether it be clothing or Hindu gods and goddesses that I got a one as a gift for my mom and then another as a gift for myself, somebody else got me because they saw me appreciating it so much that they were like, oh, I know you loved that. Here you go, I'm gonna buy it for you. And also on the trip, I just had a lot of conversations with people on the bus about like, is it okay for us to like bring certain things back with us if we find them beautiful? And basically what I have concluded through talking to multiple people on Instagram and people on the bus is that um, it's not wrong to get gods and goddesses. Um, somebody said, I don't think you're doing any cultural appropriating. It seemed through your Instagram stories that you were very intact with the culture and didn't go there to be all artsy and be like, oh my God, I'm so enlightened and cultured now. <laughs> you went there to learn more and appreciate the culture. I went there actually to follow through Buddha's life and go to like the places of significance in his life. But basically she said, I I can tell you're not doing this just to be cool or trendy. You genuinely care and want to learn more and appreciate the gods and goddesses. Overall, I don't think it's cultural appropriation um, if you have learned the significance of the gods and goddesses that you got. And um, I see that as a sign of appreciation. So I hope that made sense. And I was like, yes, that is exactly why I got them. I know their meaning. I know their purpose. And I didn't get them to like bring into my home and completely like misuse them in my culture. I got them because I see them as beautiful. So I hope that this gives you a bit of explanation as to why I'm showing the things that I am. And I hope that you don't come for me in the comments because I'm trying to avoid that as much as I can. Just trying to learn folks, just trying to get out there and understand my my wrongdoings, you know? So that's what I was doing. And thank you to the people who replied to my Instagram story. Let's freaking get into the haul, okay? <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> the first things I'm gonna show you are some clothing items I got when I was in Nepal. That was probably my biggest shopping spree. We stopped at this market in Lumbini after we left the sacred garden where Buddha was born. And we basically had a free day for once in the entire like 18 day trip. So I did a little shopping, baby. And I got this beautiful top. It's like a nice periwinkle color with this beautiful embellishment on it. And I just think that this color, one, suits me quite well. And two, it was just stunning. It was one of the most beautiful tops there. And I was like, oh, I need that. And all of the clothes that I got at the market were made in Nepal as well. But yeah, man, it's quite a long shirt and just has some nice floral embellishments on it. And I'm just planning on pairing it with like a white pant or a tan pant. 
who knows? But this was one of the shirts I got. And then the other shirt I got is a pretty traditional like male shirt, I assume, but I got it for myself to wear. Finn can wear it too, but it's just pretty basic. It's just this nice like tan color with these little buttons going down the center. I just think it's so easy and breezy and just nice for any kind of weather, honestly. Everywhere we went to was like 70 plus degrees and then we came back to Oregon and it started snowing again. <laughs> so um, I probably won't be wearing stuff like this unless it's heavily layered with a turtleneck and a jacket, but I was very excited about this. And then from that same store, I got my favorite kind of pants. Harem pants is what I call them, or drop crotch pants. One of the men who was in my traveling group with me, who's Indian, said that he calls them fisherman pants. So they go by many names, but these are the ones that I got, and I thought that they were such a funky color, I just had to pick them up. And Finley got the same ones, but in black and white, and I'm going to be borrowing those as well. But they're just so pretty. They're like orange and yellow and brown and green and white striped and they're just funky and fun. I love these pants so much. I think I have like three pairs of harem pants like that. And then the last clothing item that I got at the Lumbini market was this beautiful scarf. Oh my god. I just think it's so stunning. I was wearing scarves basically every day for modesty reasons, for head covering reasons, for just chilly weather reasons when I was in India. And so I would like to continue wearing them, honestly, while I'm back here. And like, just look at the colors. I mean, this is just such a beautiful print one. The girl selling them was so nice to me too. And I was just surveying all the colors and then I was like, you know what? This is the one for me, and it is just so freaking pretty. <laughs> it looks like I have a neck brace on. I just tied this around so much, but you get what I mean. You get the picture. It's very funky and fun, and all of the scarves that were in India, there were so many to choose from, truly. They have some amazing textiles, patterns. Ugh, it was just gorgeous. So this is definitely one of my favorite things that I got. Honestly, everything is my favorite thing that I got though. Also, this next thing I'm going to show you is something that I got as a gift and I didn't purchase it myself. And I don't think I would have purchased it myself because it's a sari, like a traditional Indian sari. And I don't really have any use in my life back home here in Oregon for a sari. I don't think I would ever wear it or sport it out. And so I wanted to show this just to be like, one, look how absolutely stunning. I mean, this is totally my color. I love a nice forest green. I love some golds. Um, and Finley's mom got this for me because there was some merchants who were like hanging around one of our meditation circles waiting for us to finish so that they could sell us stuff basically. And she got this for me from a man there and then gave it to me when I got back on the bus and was like, here's a sari. Didn't you want one? And I was like, no, but thank you. But I would love if um, one of my Indian gal viewers would comment down below and just let me know if you want this and I'll totally send it to you and pay to ship it and whatnot because I want somebody to use this garb. I mean, I could like cut it apart and sew it into something else, but I don't really feel right doing that. You know, I feel like somebody should get the sorry purpose out of this that it's serving, you know? So comment down below if you want this. I would be pleased to send it to one of you beautiful ladies out there. And then also another thing that I got when I was at the Lumbini market was this beautiful dream catcher. I love the form of dream catcher when it's like flat at the top and then goes out from the bottom, you know? And it's just white and black feathered and just has some multicolored beads. And this actually has a fun story to go with it, which I will try to summarize sweetly um, and not bore you for too long. But basically the man who sold this to me was so lovely. He was probably one of the biggest reasons that I loved Nepal so much out of the whole trip. Um, Finley and I were at that market for a while and I was going kind of back and forth between shops trying to find a dream catcher that wasn't like expensive. And so I went to this one shop where I got this from and the guy there was like, hello, how can I help you? You know, just being super friendly. And he gave me a price on one of the other dream catchers at his shop and was like, if this doesn't work for you, you know, you can come back later and we can have coffee together, just hang out. And I kind of thought he was joking and I was like, all right, man. And then just kind of like went on my way and was still at the market. And then I ended up going back to his shop with Finley and he was so freaking nice. He like truly did get us coffee and we sat down and talked with him for like 
over an hour. I wish that I knew how to pronounce his name perfectly other than how I'm going to butcher it now, but I believe it was Mahul Bahir. Either way, he was an icon. He was just like answering all of our questions about Nepal, asking us about our lives. He gave me like free incense because I told him that I would send a pack of his incense at his shop to his aunt who lives in Minnesota because the shipping from Nepal to America is insanely expensive. And I was like, dude, I'll do it for you. You've done so many nice things for me, of course. And he was like so flattered by that. He was like chopping down the price on everything that I wanted to get from him but I ended up just leaving with this and I'm so happy that I have this now as a memory of him and he also gave us friendship bracelets this one right here and then this one is from my sangha that I was traveling with but yeah my pal my friend he was so great I'll stop blabbering about that now and show you some other hangy things that I got this was actually the first thing that I purchased when I was in India I got these at um, the street market in Sarnath that was a great place wonderful place but look at these they're like little I guess you could hang a light bulb in them from the top and make them kind of lantern thingies but I think I'm just gonna add them to my ceiling over here since I have so many dream catchers hanging um, I feel like they would fit well above my dresser over here the situation you can't see that I'm pointing to but anyways it has these nice little colors around it and I got two of them actually and then the other one that I got has some varying colors so yeah, man, I just thought these were so funky and cool and great. And um, I'm so happy that I got these. They were my best first purchase. <laughs> All right, these next three things that I got were from such an amazing shop. I need to put on the screen what the shop name is. I am unsure of it right now. And I emailed the group leader of my trip, if you will, and was like, where was that place that we went in Varanasi with the hand looms? <laughs> they did the most insane work. I got it on vlog, the like entire explaining process and whatnot. I'm still editing my NDA vlog, by the way. I got a shit ton of footage, so that's gonna take me a little while. But yeah, basically we went to a shop that uses hand looms to make their like saris and scarves and a bunch of other materials other than that. They had like bedspreads and pillow covers and blankets and all of these insanely detailed things. It was truly so amazing. So the first thing I'm gonna show you, Lindsay, my sister, if you're watching this, please click out, okay? I should have told you that before I told you where I got it, but I guess I'm sending you this soon anyways, so if you're still watching, then frick, the surprise is ruined. <laughs> but I got my sister this beautiful, like gold detailed teal scarf. I felt like this would suit her so well with the coloring, you know, cause she's a blonde. It's got some nice like fringe hanging, Below, and it's just oh it's so gorgeous the detail is just unreal and watching them make the things I mean they take months to finish just a small garb like this like truly the work was so crazy to watch and I was so happy to give them my money I was like where else would I find something that is so traditionally hand woven and done other than here? And they just had such a wild shop. They like explained how everything was made and then they explained that they have 400 workers who have looms in their house of the traditional way and they work for them and then they just bring the garbs back once they're finished with them. And then as for something for myself, Finley's parents got this for me as a gift and I am so grateful. Like I said earlier when I was showing you guys that green sari, this kind of foresty green color, the golds, ah, oh, they're my colors, okay? Um, and so I was so, so happy that they gave me this. It's more of like a shawl, honestly. It's like an over the top covering or around here kind of covering. It's definitely um, a lot bigger than the one that I got for my sister, but it is just so stunning and wonderful. And I'm so happy to have this as a nice souvenir of my time in Varanasi. I mean, the design is just so insane and I will always cherish seeing that experience <laughs> of watching them weave these. And then also, speaking of gifts, <laughs> Finley's parents also gave us this, which is more of like a wall hanging than something you would wear, but it is this absolutely stunning hand-woven gold wall hanging with these little like peacocks and birds and deer, elephants, flowers, all of the things. I mean, just get a load of that. Oh, I just can't wait to hang it. I'm probably gonna hang it in here, honestly, because I have a lot of gold accented things and I feel like the coloring will just look so nice. And yeah, man, as soon as he showed this, he was showing us like some of his more like popular pieces in his collection. And as soon as he showed it, Finley was like, that's my favorite one. I want that. 
And so his parents got it for us and it was just such a sweet gift, man. Oh, mwah. I love this so much. I'm so excited to hang that up. All right, now speaking of gifts again, this is something that I got for my mother because like the first day I got to India, she told me, if you see a green Tara, the Hindu goddess, um, please get it for me, a green or white Tara. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I will be on the lookout. And so I got this, I believe it was outside of the Sarnath um, Archaeological Museum. That was such a cool place, honestly, they had so many, Oh, just insane sculptures and bronzes and just so many various things. Anyways, it's this little green Tara. I guess it's not that little. It's probably like palm sized for me. Oh yeah, nice focus for you there. She is so beautiful. It's just insanely wonderfully made. And this was just a nice brass little sculpture thing that I can't wait to send to my mom upon her request. And it's nice that I got to get that for her in India. Um, I also got this green Tara from Shantam Seth, who was the leader of our Buddha Path tour. And it's basically just the same thing, but a mini version of it. And I had told him that I was looking for a green Tara for my mom, and I had already bought her that one. And I hadn't told him this, but he gave this to me like a week after I had gotten it. And he was like, I remember you were looking for a green Tara for your mom. I got you this one today and I was like, okay, one, that was so sweet of you. You didn't need to do that. And two, I'll be keeping this for myself as a nice like souvenir of my time, you know, and just that sweet gift. He didn't have to do that, but he did. And speaking of gods and goddesses, I also got this as a gift from Chris and Lilla, Finley's parents, and they did not have to get me this, but they did for my birthday. And I was like, what the crap? Okay, basically I was looking at this in a store for a very long time and then I just kind of settled on, I don't have the money for that <laughs> and so I'm just gonna leave it here. It's beautiful, I know, but I don't have the money. And this was like the last night of our trip. And so I just went back to the hotel room and then Lila came knocking on our door and was like, happy birthday, Megan, happy early birthday. <laughs> Cause my birthday is not until March 24th. But she got this for me because I had been admiring it for so long. <laughs> this is Shiva in the form of Nataraha, I believe is how you pronounce that. This form basically conveys Shiva being the creator, the preserver, and the destroyer of the universe. And it also shows the Indian conception of the never-ending time cycle. And I just think this is such a stunning, stunning sculpture. I saw at an archaeological museum an original like brass depiction of this that was in this big glass box, and I was just sitting there studying it for so long, just being like, holy shit, this is the craziest thing I have ever seen. And I fell in love with this depiction of Shiva and I was like, oh my God, this is just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing to have. I could talk about this for a while, as you can see. This is such a precious gem from my trip. And I'm just so grateful that Lila got this for me for my birthday, I was like, what the heck? We also got this Buddha. I believe this is a like stone or a clay kind of sculpture of Buddha. But at the same museum that I saw that depiction of Shiva at, I saw this completely like blown up, vast, like multiple feet tall and wide. And we were just like examining it and going into all the little intricate details of this sculpture itself. So to have a little mini version of it for my home is just wonderful. My little Buddha. Also, we got this little incense burner. That's a Bodhi leaf. Fun fact, Buddha attained enlightenment underneath a Bodhi tree. And we went to that temple with the Bodhi tree that he was said to have gotten enlightened under. And um, there was so many like shops and stores that were just selling Bodhi leaves or pressed Bodhi leaves. And this is just such a pretty little incense burner. There's a little hole down here to put your incense in. And then there's just this little ceramic thing to hold it. And so we got this. You can also also use it as like a spoon rest or a soap dish. It's very versatile in that way, but I'll probably just use it to burn some incense. And then we also got these Mira Bambulis dupe sticks of jasmine incense. I noticed that in India, they have a lot of incense that's like forever burning. Like it just burns all the way down to the ash and doesn't leave any stick behind. So these are stickless. And oh snap, I just realized that this is the end of this haul. This is the last thing that we got. <laughs> this was what we got on our last night in India. We got this in Delhi at actually a little shop in our hotel that we were staying at. And this would be used for like pouring tea or like wine or something like that. But I honestly might just put this on our dining room table downstairs and like just have it as a pretty thing. I just think this is so beautiful. It's like hand painted and just a gorgeous brass little 
teapot type thing. <laughs> there was a bunch of these that came in a set with tiny little glasses on like a serving platter, but we decided on just getting this one piece instead. And I'm so happy that we decided to get this at all because it's beautiful. So yeah, man, that's all of the things that I got while I was in India for almost three weeks. And I really, really hope that you guys can understand that I bought these things or had these things gifted to me because we all thought that India was a beautiful country and that they had beautiful things to sell in all the stores that I went to. I had very wonderful experiences with everybody there. And I just had so many talks with the Indian and the American folks who were traveling with me on that trip about, you know, cultural appropriation and why that is such a big thing in the West. And I almost didn't film this because I was slightly scared to share these things that I got on my journey for fear of people commenting and telling me that I was culturally appropriating India as a country as a whole. And to my understanding from the conversations that I had with people older than me about this, it's not inherently wrong to go to a country and buy things from that country because you see them as beautiful. Like there were so many shops that I went into where the men and women in India were trying to sell me, you know, traditional things of their culture, whether it be like bindis or henna or saris and other things and I felt like to them they were happy to sell that to me they were happy to have me embracing their culture in that way they weren't like oh you can't wear those things or don't buy those things they were like encouraging us to so I just wanted to say that as a quick side note in this as well because I almost feel like I need to explain why I bought these things because being a white person people might be like why do you have that in your home but I truly don't see anything wrong with getting souvenirs from my beautiful time in India and bringing them back to where I live to have them as like mementos of my trip and the people that I met there and all of those things. So that is my very long explanation to conclude this video. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will have my India vlog up probably within the week, I'm going to say. I'm going to shoot for that. And yeah, man, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Ring the notifications bell if you would like to know when I upload. And until the next upload, stay smiling. Bye guys. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, baby. <laughs> tip, tip, tip.